As we've just glimpsed in those remarkable drawings, the Victorians were an innovative bunch when it came to getting from A to B. The advent of steam-powered travel enabled the masses to flock far and wide, including to the seaside. But the railway's contribution to a good day out didn't end there. Scarborough on the stunning Yorkshire coast. It was Britain's first ever seaside resort, thanks to a 17th century publication, heralding its natural spring water as a cure for all ills. And by the mid 18th century, sea bathing here became the height of fashion, with the gentry using horse-drawn bathing machines to transfer them modestly from beach to brine. But this resort of magical waters and weird contraptions has an even more delightful claim to fame, because it's home to the very first passenger funicular railway in the country. Now, if that's not a great reason to pack your bucket and spade, I don't know what is. I'd like you to meet Adrian Perry, president of the local civic society and an expert on how Scarborough became Britain's funicular railway pioneer. We're in the South Bay of Scarborough and this is the bottom station of the cliff lift. It was opened in 1875 and it was the first passenger lift funicular in the country. Scarborough has some beautiful views. But the reason why you get all these beautiful views is because it's hilly. When this was built in 1875, they actually advertised that for one penny, travel on the lift and avoid 260 steps. This groundbreaking feat of engineering was an ingenious solution to a very pressing problem. In the 1870s, Scarborough Spa was the most popular music venue outside London. And the need to link South Cliff Esplanade at the top to the spa at the bottom must have caused much Victorian head scratching. From the top, it's clear why 19th century day trippers were reluctant to make the journey by foot. When the railways came to Scarborough in 1845, it absolutely changed the game for everybody. Scarborough used to have train loads of people come into town on the day trip, and there were 9,000 people just in, you know, came into Scarborough just at one go. Those excited holidaymakers would have been drawn to the mini grandeur of the upper and lower stations. With large windows, intricately carved fascia, and decorative wrought iron detailing, no expense was spared, and people clamoured to ride to the trams. They were designed by consulting engineer Mr. Lucas and built by the Crossley Brothers of Manchester at a cost of £8,000. The pair of counterbalance cars, attached by a cable, ascended and descended the steep gradient, carrying 20 people each. By 1888, it was being used by 250,000 passengers a year. When we visited, it was closed for repair, but after 147 years of sterling service, I think we can forgive it for needing a bit of TLC. The Southcliffe lift was an immediate success. People found out that it was the quickest way to get down to the beach, and it was the quickest way to come back up, and it only takes a minute or two. This is a very important part of transport in Scarborough. And of course, this was picked up by other resorts all the way around the country. Rather delightfully, a further four were constructed right here, adorning the Scarborough cliff line. 